بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين Brothers and sisters, السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته and welcome in a series of episodes during which we will address the basics of faith, the articles of faith and the pillars of Islam amongst other things through the uh, famous hadith of Jibreel alayhi salam. Before that, let me introduce the, or pave the way uh, for this with a couple of ahadith from the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Perhaps it will motivate us uh, to learn and seek knowledge, inshallah. In the book of Imam uh, Abu Dawood, and it was classed as authentic by Al-Albani, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, anyone who takes a path in search of knowledge, Allah will facilitate for them one of the paths towards paradise. The angels lower their wings to show great pleasure with the one who seeks knowledge and honor them. Indeed, the inhabitants of the heavens and the earth and the fish in deep waters ask forgiveness for the person seeking knowledge. The superiority of the learned person over the devout worshipper is like that of the full moon over the rest of the stars, meaning in its brightness and its light. Then he said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the learned are the ears of the prophets, for the prophets speak with neither gold nor silver, they only left behind knowledge. And this shows the great virtue and merit of people of knowledge and seeking knowledge. We ask Allah Azza wa Jal to make us amongst them. Allahumma ameen. Another narration which is related to what we are in, in this session and the following sessions, insha'Allah. Uh, in the book of Imam Muslim, may Allah have mercy on him, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said, never will people sit remembering Allah, mentioning Allah, studying the religion, Except that the angels will surround them, mercy will engulf them, peace will descend upon them, and Allah will mention them amongst those who are with him, meaning the angels. So just imagine Allah mentioning you by name in front of the angels, boasting about you and being proud of about you, which reflects his pleasure with you, subhanahu wa ta'ala. This session, as I said, will be uh, through discussing and shedding light on the narration, the long narration of Jibreel alayhi uh, salam. And this narration is reported by both al-Bukhari and Muslim. And I will mention uh, various uh, reports of the same narration from different books uh, due to the importance of some points uh, that are mentioned in uh, the other books. The narration is uh, reported by, uh, as I said, Al-Bukhari and Muslim, and it's narrated by Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu. He radiallahu anhu said, whilst we were with the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam one day, a man appeared who was intensely white in his clothes. His hair was very dark, very black rather. And there was no sign or trace of travel that could be seen upon him. And none of us knew him. And he walked until he reached to the Messenger وسلم, And he sat down, placing his knees against the knees of the Prophet وسلم, And placed his hands on his thighs. And said, O oh Muhammad, inform me about Islam. He وسلم, said, Islam is to testify that none is worthy of worship except Allah and that Muhammad وسلم, is his messenger to establish the prayer, to pay the zakah, the mandatory alms, to fast Ramadan, to perform pilgrimage, hajj, uh, if you're capable and able uh, to do it, to reach it. We'll mention that inshallah in details. And then the man said, you have spoken the truth. He said, Umar radiallahu anhu. He said, we were surprised for he is asking a question and then confirming the answer. Because usually when you ask questions, 
You're asking it because you don't have knowledge and you need, to, you need the answer. You don't have prior knowledge of it, so you confirm the answer of the person if he says something that you believe is, is the truth. In any case, he, radiallahu anhu, continued to, to say, so the man said, inform me about iman, about faith. He said to believe in Allah, his angels, his books, his messengers, and the, day, the hereafter, and to believe in decree, predestiny, good and evil. Then the man again said, you have spoken the truth. So he said, so inform me about Ihsan. The Prophet wasallam said, it is to worship Allah as if you see him. Because although you don't see him, he sees you. He said, inform me about the hour. He said, the one who is being asked about it has no more knowledge about it than the one who is asking about it. Meaning, me and you are equal in this knowledge. I don't have knowledge about it, just like you don't have knowledge about it. He said, then inform me about its signs. He sallallahu alayhi wasallam said, it is when the female slave gives birth to her mistress. And when you see the barefooted, naked uh, shepherds compete in constructing high buildings. Then Umar said, he left, he picked up and left, this man. And I stayed for a long while in another narration. He said, I stayed for three days until the Prophet wasallam came to me and he said, Oh Umar, do you know who was this man who was asking these questions? Or who is the inquirer? He said, I said, Allah and his messenger wasallam, know best. He said, it was Jibreel, he came to teach you your religion. Another narration also in uh, Bukhari and Muslim. Now, the version I just cited now is the version of Muslim. Another narration, also a version of Muslim. Jibreel came and said, Assalamu alayka ya Muhammad. Oh Muhammad, assalamu alayk. So the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam responded to his greeting and he said, Oh Muhammad, should I come close? He said, yes, come close. Umar radiallahu anhu said, he continued to ask these, uh, this question few times. Should I come close? May I come close? And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa is permitting him in each time and saying, yes, come closer, come closer. Until he sat down and placed his hands on the knees of the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa uh, these scholars, different scholars said different things about this hadith, but they all yani, revolve around the same meaning. Ibn Rajab, may Allah have mercy on him, said, this is a, a very great hadith, and it, ex, it includes clarifications of the entire religion. And that's why at the end, the Prophet wasallam said to Umar, this is Jibreel, he came to teach you your religion. He didn't say he came to teach you aspects of your religion or parts of your religion. He came to teach you your religion in totality. Now let's try to explain a few things, a few phrases in the narration. The first point here is that Umar said, whilst we were the mess with the messenger وسلم, one day, and this shows that the Prophet ﷺ was always present amongst his companions. He was never absent. He used to sit with them and talk to them and guide them. And this reflects his kind manners and humbleness ﷺ. Clearly seen. Now, this means that he was never hidden. He was never alone. He was never, never in seclusion. He was always amongst them. And the reason this uh, came about uh, he, that he was sitting in a way that was clearly seen uh, is explained by the narration that is reported by uh, Abu Dawood. Abu Dhar and Abu Huraira, may Allah be pleased with them both, said uh, the Prophet ﷺ used to sit amongst 
his companions between them. So a stranger would come and would not recognize him. He would not know who amongst these people is the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, which shows his humbleness alayhi salatu wa sallam and that he was down to earth and would have to ask who is the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So one day they say, we took permission from the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to construct or build something for him that he can sit on so he could be recognized when strangers come who did not know him. So he said, so we constructed or built for him a high bench of clay, made of clay. And he used to sit on it, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and he, we used to sit around him. And this is why the narration said he was clearly seen, alayhi salatu wa sallam. Now scholars extracted from this that the person who is teaching may sit in, an, in a place that is higher than the audience, than the students who are seeking knowledge or learning from him, especially when there is a large number, so they can benefit from him. And again, he could be recognized when people come uh, who are strangers, who are not from uh, his regular audience. Now, the next phrase we want, to, uh, we want to address here is the saying of Umar that uh, a man appeared. Now, at the end, we know at the end of the narration, the Prophet ﷺ said that this was Jibreel, the angel Jibreel, the known Jibreel uh, archangel. And in this is a proof, this is evidence that angels can come in the form or shape as humans. As this uh, narration proves that Jibreel السلام, came in the form of an angel. And Allah Azza wa also mentioned to us in Surah Maryam, that Jibreel came to Maryam in the form or shape of a human being. Uh, also, the angels who came to Prophets Ibrahim and Lut, السلام, they came in the form or shape of human beings. And this is by the power and will and decree of Allah Azza wa Jal, who created them from light, as we will dis the explain later, Allah Azza wa Jal can make them take shapes different than their original shape. Notice that Jibreel alayhi salam asked different questions. And the person who is asking questions does not necessarily have to stick to things that he does not have knowledge about or unaware of. Rather, scholars said that if there is a, a gathering and a person is asking questions, he may ask questions of things that he knows the answers to so that the audience would hear the answer and thus benefit from his question or questions. The importance of this story of, of Jibreel is that it highlights a very important matter for us Muslims, which is asking when you are not aware of something, especially pertaining to deen, matters of your religion, your faith, your acts of worship. You must ask questions so that you worship Allah Azza wa Jal and believe in Allah Azza wa Jal in a correct manner. And this is only achieved by asking those of knowledge. As Allah Azza wa Jal says, فَاسْأَلُوا أَهْلَ الذِّكْرِ إِن كُنْتُمْ لَا تَعْلَمُونَ Which means, ask those of knowledge if you are unaware, if you don't know. So Allah Azza wa Jal is instructing us, guiding us, showing us the way to learn our faith, to learn the practical aspects of our religion by means of asking questions when we don't know. Now, the, the importance of asking is that it protects the person from doing something that contradicts his religion, the legislations in Islam, whilst he's unaware of. And the person should not be shy. You should not shy away from asking people of knowledge, even in a gathering. Oh, people will say, I don't know. Or... Uh, 
uh, I may not present myself in a proper manner. Ask questions. If you don't ask questions, you'll never learn. Don't be embarrassed from asking questions, regardless of who's sitting. At the end, it's your religion, your relationship with your Lord, and you must know it. You must know how to reach your Lord, how to worship your Lord. What does your Lord want from you? And this is only achieved through asking questions. Now, the description of Umar radiallahu anhu was that this man was wearing intense clothes, intense white clothes. They're intensely white. And his hair was very black. So this reflects that this man was very clean. And that it is recommended, as scholars said, it is recommended from this description, description for a person who is going to attend a lesson, a circle of knowledge, to wear his best and to look his best before he goes and attends. Because he's going to attend an honorable gathering, a gathering which is teaching him how to communicate with his Lord, how to worship his Lord, how to learn about his Lord and his religion. And then he said there is no trace of travel can be seen on this man. Now, a traveler, especially during their time, used to come dusty and his clothes are uh, untidy and because they used to either walk or ride animals, camels or donkeys or horses. Or, and when you walk in the desert, definitely you will get dusty. Your hair, your feet, your clothes. But this man had no trace of any of that. And this is why it was surprising. It was strange for them to see him. And then Umar said, none of us knew that, uh, knew that person. How did no Umar know that other than himself, no one else knew this man? Well, there is another narration that is reported by Ahmed. And as I said in the beginning, the importance of having the, the various narrations or versions of the story gives you more information. Uh, the one in, uh, in the Musnad of Ahmed uh, that is reported by uh, or narrated by Uthman ibn Ghayyath, may Allah be pleased with him. He said, people started looking at each other and they said to one another, we don't recognize this man. And this is why Umar radiallahu anhu in, in his story, when he was narrating his side of the story, he said, none of us knew this man. Now you have to understand that the residents of Medina, the people of Medina, uh, they knew each other. The Medina, Medina at that time was not uh, as huge as it is nowadays, you know. So people knew one another, especially those who attended the gatherings of the Prophet Sallallahu So this is another reason why Umar said none of us knew this man or recognized him. Now, Jibreel sat, as in the narration, facing the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And the scholars said this reflects that one of the etiquettes and manners a student of knowledge should be sitting in, in the gathering of knowledge is that he faces the person who is addressing the, the uh, gathering and show respect to the one who's learning from. And it also reflected that Jibreel was very attentive and very recipient to whatever information the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was about to tell him. To tell him. He, Jibreel, greeted the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Assalamu alayka Muhammad, as in one of the, the narrations or the versions of the story. So, before asking question, a question, scholars said, it is recommended that a person greets the person whom he's about to ask. Because the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in a narration that is reported by Ahmed and classed as uh, sound, uh, he said, whoever starts asking you before he greets you with salam, then don't, greet, don't respond to him until he greets you or starts with salam. 
So uh, this is very important to remember that you need to be greeting the person before you asking questions because of this narration and because it's one of the manners and etiquettes of asking questions from a learned person. Now, one of the versions, he said, O oh Muhammad, inform me about Islam. And he just used the name Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He didn't say, O oh Messenger of Allah, O oh Prophet of Allah. And this coincides with the habits of the Arabs at the time. He used to come and ask the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, other than the residents of Medina, that is. Uh, and this is how they would uh, address him Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Next point is the saying of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam when he came to Hajj. And this is only with Hajj. He said, if you're capable and able to perform it. And the reason why this is only mentioned with Hajj is because the Hajj, amongst all the practical pillars of Islam, is the most difficult, the, more, the most demanding of the pillars of Islam. Uh, and there is a principle amongst the scholars is that when something is mandatory upon a Muslim to perform uh, and he is incapable of doing it, then it is waived until he is able and capable uh, to do it. Let's conclude with this and we will resume inshallah in the following session. Jazakumullahu khairan. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.